Okay, and on number 12, we will notice that it has a log, and we know the drill by now, hopefully, which was what? I see an integral with a log or an inverse trig function. There's one way of proceeding. You must let u equal the natural log. There's no way around it. If du will do the trick, you're in good shape. If not, then you're going to really have to use integration both parts. So if I take a derivative of that, wouldn't that be 1 over 1 plus x squared times 2x dx? So that didn't work. Well, if I take, if I let dv equal dx, then d will equal x. And in turn, this integral becomes u times v minus the integral of d du. And what do we know about this? It's a fraction, not any fraction. It is an improper fraction. So I would go on the side and figure out what that equals. And if I take x squared plus 1 divided by x squared, that would be 1 x squared plus 1 subtract. So that would be 2 times the integral of 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And that's pretty much it. That's x. Let me shift this other down. And that's going to be x natural log of 1 plus x squared minus twice x minus inverse tangent of x. Don't forget the plus c. Let's see if I can get that one up. Let me put this right here and close this. All right. Next problem, I want to look at problem number 16, and I'm trying to figure out if I could do a new sub on this, and it doesn't work. So, the good news, I am giving you those integrals, well, the tables, sorry. So, in this case, when I see this, I already know what to do. I am going to let x equal the sine of theta, dx is going to be the cosine of theta d theta, and that would be the integral, and let's see how this works. x, that's the sine squared of theta over the square root of 1 minus the sine squared of theta times cosine of theta d theta, and that would be, so I would change the limits on the integral this way, I don't have to go back, if I put x equals 0, then sine of theta equals 0 when x equals 0. And if I put radical 2 over 2, sine of theta equals radical 2 over 2 when theta is pi over 4. Awesome. Now I have to go back. That's the integral from 0 to pi over 4. And I know what this is. That is the cosine squared of theta. So this is the sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta times cosine of theta d theta. And one way of doing this problem using power reduction 1 minus the cosine of d theta divided by 2 d theta and you could finish the rest. Alright, and again, if you have any questions on this, I'll be more than happy to answer during the class discussion. That's why I'm trying to do as many of those before class. This way you can view them and whatever you're not sure about, you could come in ask about that or homework questions, it makes no difference. And here's another integral, e to the square root of t dt, well obviously I'm going to let u equal radical t and du will be 1 over twice radical t dt, so good news. This 
is right there. So that's E to the U and off by a constant that's easy to compensate for. And I should change the limits on the angle when I put P equal 1, square root of 1 is 1. When I put in P equal 4, square root of 4 is 2, and there it is. So some problems are straightforward. Always look for a U sub. I did put number 20 on one of the exams back in the days by mistake. It wasn't intended to be a tricky problem, and I was surprised how many students missed it. Uh, this is not e to the 2x, you guys. This is e to the second. That's a number. So as far as the integral is concerned, that's a constant. And that's simply that number times x plus c. And that's it. I don't know why students thought it was tricky, or oh, can be it, or oh, does it? But yeah, that's all there is to it. Come on. If it's that easy, then probably it is. Don't make it harder than it should be. And here's another problem. Again, I'm glancing at those. I have a couple of options here, and this will really direct you to getting different answers depending on what you choose. If you started by the traditional, by saying, you know what, let's let u equal natural log of x, that's fine. Then, if I let du equal 1 over x dx, that would mean that I'm looking at, let me see, I'm looking at the integral of what? There is my u square root of 1 plus u squared. And 1 over x dx is the u. Okay, that, that seems to be working. That's not bad. And at this stage, a u sub will do the trick. Let's say w. I could say, you know what? Let w equal 1 plus u squared. Wouldn't be w equal 2 u du? And that would become the interval of the square root of u du over 1 half. And you can see. Or, or, I could have said, let u equal 1 plus natural log of x squared. And wouldn't that mean du is twice natural log of x times 1 over x dx. Now I look at this angle, I'll notice that's the interval of this is the square root of u, and du is right there. You're off by a 2, and you're at the same stage, and you continue on that step. So how do you proceed? It doesn't really matter. What matters is when you see natural log, you should try a u sub, and it's not the way I do the problem is what matters. It's how would you think of doing the problem is really what matters. So if you looked at a problem and you decided I'm going to try this slightly different, you can. That's not a problem. That's why we're doing this section. You really want to practice back and forth until you get this down. And it takes time. This is not something simple. Next problem up, I want to look at problem number 24. And in this case, if I glance at the problem, well, I am giving you that table again. The formula sheet is provided for certain of these. Here we go. Come on. And a lot. Okay. So how does that work? Well, obviously, if I let u equal. 1 plus tangent to u will be secant squared if they don't match. So what can I do? I could FOIL this. I could say that's 1 plus twice the tangent of x plus tangent squared of x secant of x dx. Right? So that is the secant of x plus twice secant of x tan of x plus tangent squared of x secant of x dx. 
and we have again we're gonna minimize three intervals this is one of them that's natural log of sequence of x plus one of x and when you take a derivative off you get secant tangent that is secant of x and how about here this is the angle of let's see if I let u equal secant secant tangent that's not working so isn't this right here secant squared of x minus 1 times secant of x dx and that would be natural log of secant of x plus tan of x plus secant of x plus so this is actually secant cubed of x minus secant of x oh boy so this is going to be the interval of secant cubed of x dx minus natural log of secant of x plus tan of x plus c now this i said is an example it's example 8 in section 7.2 you're welcome to look it up. If it comes up on the exam, there's no need for you to simplify it. I don't mind. I'm going to stop the video here and continue on in the next one.